Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is the final video in our series on the first match between Deep Blue and Garry Kasparov. Of course we'll be uh, following up with a new series on the second match which was uh, yeah even more thrilling I have to say. But here we are looking at the sixth game match. Uh, Gary was leading 3-2, uh, uh, somewhat surprisingly actually, after uh, Deep Blue kind of uh, imploded um, in the fifth game, quite surprisingly uh, in my view. And uh, well, Deep Blue uh, needed to win as black. And um, as Sung Sung Shu explains in his uh, book Behind Deep Blue, um, our opening system for black had been prepared under the premise of trying to draw as black. No opening was ever prepared to handle the case of having to win as black. That uh, makes it quite tough. So um, Murray Campbell and Joel Benjamin, uh, they settled on the idea of playing the semi-slav, tried to enter as many possible variations as possible and did whatever tests they could in the short time available. So, sort of funny, really, to see, uh, you know, sort of that rush for preparation that's such a, a human thing, really, you know, just um, um, also applying to, uh, to computer chess at the time. Well... Gary um, stuck to knight f3 and 2d4 and also stuck to uh, this very solid system against the, um, uh, the semi-slav knight bd2. Just protecting the c4 pawn, not allowing any of the sharpest lines with d takes c4 and really asking black to, to come up with something. Um, yeah, I mean, there are many ways to, uh, to equalize. Obviously, deep blue couldn't be happy with you know, what happened in the... Uh, um, in the fourth game there really because uh, yeah you know there's not really that many chances for a win so I don't know what exactly the preparation was but I imagine that uh, well you know this position came up in the fourth game so I imagine that uh, this move c5 this was uh, um, the deep blue team's preparation um, yeah always um, uh, felt I, I think I, I once uh, lost a game against Tony Miles many many years ago when I was quite small um, and um, he just did something like uh, taking on c5 and going a3 b4 and um, uh, yeah simply got a you know quite a nice sort of uh, um, yeah Queen's Gambit accepted type position but um, with a tempo up because black's gone c6 c5 not too serious but yeah just slightly annoying um what gary did was was very very solid i mean the engines like to take off first of all and then to play b3 and then eventually go d take c5 and play against the iqp um gary played um b3 very safely um so sort of like a you know a collet zucatort system really i mean um Gary's going to be sort of happy to uh, accept the hanging pawns. Nicely protected, the, the knight protecting the pawn on c4 quite nicely. And um, yeah, see what deep blue can come up with. But actually, it seems that uh, deep blue didn't have a very good uh, grip of, uh, of these positions and uh, made some mistakes. But interestingly enough, these were mistakes that, um, well, when the deep blue team uh, fixed them for the 1997 match, they turned out to be quite important. So yeah, it was... Um, it was a loss, but um, it was also in many ways also uh, the seed of future victory. So um, knight c6 was played, um, bishop b2, c takes d4, e takes d4. Um, yeah, Gary not playing uh, out and out for the draw here with, uh, with white. He's keeping some tension. I mean, stuff like knight takes d4, for, for example, yeah, it looks like he's going to get uh, pretty even quite soon. You know, I mean, the D takes C4 will happen at some stage and you're completely symmetrical. But Gary, uh, you know, sort of, um, I think he, uh, you know, he sort of, uh, he had a good feeling after the, the previous game. He had a good feeling that he uh, had some sort of grip on the, uh, on the engine somehow. So, um, uh, yeah. And uh, also interesting that he's following a game of his great rival, Anatoly Karpov. Um, D Blue played uh, Bishop E7 here. Uh, there was a game Karpov Kaidano from the Tilburg Rapid 1993, where uh, the black player had gone Knight E4 and Bishop B4, which is quite interesting actually. Uh, actually, this uh, this uh, turned out quite nicely for uh, for Black after Castles. He took took and took on C4, and um, well, Karpov ended up taking on C4 like this, and then Castles, and uh, yeah, this was quite uh, quite decent for uh, for Black as well. Um, D blue played bishop e7 and now rook c1 from uh, from Gary and I think that this was uh, yeah more uh, Gary cunning really because um, um, it's quite possible that if Gary had gone bishop d3 that um, uh, deep blue would still have been in its um, um, extended book 
But Rook C1 was, was just a novelty at the time, so there wouldn't be any chance that uh, the Deep Blue would have seen this move. Um, and to be honest, you know, people were not really playing Rook C1 uh, early anyway. So, um, uh, yeah, pretty likely, basically, that this would, um, uh, this would get Deep Blue out of book. And now we'll have to see whether Deep Blue knows where to put its pieces. Um, yeah, I mean, um, uh, my engines were looking at um, uh, just going uh, Bishop D3, uh, B6 castles, Bishop B7, Rook C1 now, castles, Rook E1, Rook C8. Pretty, you know, standard stuff here, really, the, just putting the pieces round to, uh, to decent squares. And then knight f1, quite a nice idea here, bringing the knight round to g3. These are all stockfish dragon and dragon stockfish games. Um, and then takes takes, and now knight b8, which I, I just shows how, uh, you know, how well the engines understand all these lines. Uh, I mean, the knight's not great on c6 in these um, uh, positions, g g exposed to d5. Uh, much nicer, really, to um, to free the bishop and let it cut across the white position, and the knight's coming round to d7, and possibly even f8, g6, and maybe even into uh, to f4 as well. So knight g3, knight bd7, and uh, gets quite sharp, knight g5, but then h6, knight f3, queen c7, and uh, yeah, I mean, this is uh, quite a typical uh, um, hanging pawns position where um, white's maybe a, a, a touch better, but uh, yeah, the engines don't fear anything at all here for uh, for black. So yeah, you know, quite an uh, interesting position. Uh, that was what the engines wanted to do with bishop d3, but Gary's rook c1 was, uh, was pretty cunning there. Castles and bishop d3, and I think, you know, also that... Um, you know the idea of uh, of rook c1 as well was um was possibly to um to sort of uh, um uh make uh, d blue a little bit nervous about playing the move b6 for example because of c takes d5 i mean here um you know opening up a, an attack against uh, the knight on c6 i mean here you could go knight b4 so it doesn't apply but maybe that was you know one of the ideas of going rook c1 early that uh, at least black wouldn't want to play b6 straight away in this position and then uh um, in behind deep blue uh, there's this interesting comment um, it said um, because um, deep blue played bishop d7 here and it said uh, the fact that we'd never let uh, deep blue play this opening became immediately obvious uh, deep blue was supposed to develop its light square bishop to the b7 square um, but after being taken out of the opening book by Gary's transposition, it moved the bishop to d7 instead. d blue liked to put its bishops on open diagonals, diagonals no longer impeded by pawns. And it didn't understand that sometimes it is, it's acceptable to put the bishop on a closed diagonal as long as the option to open the diagonal existed. Um, it was possible to uh, fix the problem to some extent in software, but a complete solution would require modifying the chess chip. That's again harking back to um, you know uh, what we were talking about with uh, having so much of the evaluation in the hardware chess chip itself. If something's slightly off with that, uh, you can try and uh, work around it in software. But um, yeah, um, you know if there's a real problem, then you need to work around it in uh, in hardware and. Um, um, those modifications implemented as a result of this game to the chess chip, um, um, uh, yeah, uh, to improve the handling of the bishops, and similarly the rooks turned out to be critical in the 1997 rematch. And in particular, um, this idea of um, um, uh, putting power on something that could be opened in the future, um, yeah, that was particularly important in game two, in actual fact. And, uh, well, we'll have a, a very big look at, uh, at, uh, yeah, at the 1997 match in the, uh, in an ensuing series. Um, so, um, and yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think also making that comment about, um, seeing that pieces could become active, um, in a certain spot in the future. If there's one thing that, um, that the neural nets have really done so well, you really brought to, uh, to chess, it's that. It's that ability to see beyond the, the immediate position and to um, uh, foresee in the future how pieces can become active and yeah, make a plan according to that. And that used to be a, a typically human uh, um, uh, insight, but the, the neural nets well, do it way better than we do uh, even nowadays. Interesting thing about um, about all this is that you know if you give this position to engines nowadays, they are, you know, it's all about mobility, 
all about activity and everything and uh, what they're prepared to do is simply amazing i mean it it, it goes even beyond uh, humans or maybe it sort of replicates crazy humans uh, somehow uh, you feel because uh, in this position uh, stockfish against dragon and uh, a dragon in this position wanted to play takes takes and then this move b5 so the idea is b5 if you take on b5 we're going knight b4 and then we're going to go a6 just a little bit like a benko and uh, get plenty of counterplay you know the, obviously the light squares around the isolated pawn have been weakened this bishop is now uh, sort of tied down to attacking a pawn d5 isn't really going to happen so plenty of compensation there and uh, well stockfish doesn't want to do that plays the move c5 um, and then rook b8 castles a5 you know dragon just uh, gaining space on the um, uh, on the queen side there bishop b1 bishop b7 rook e1 bishop a8 knight f1 queen d5 and you know you just compare what um, what has happened here with what happened in the game and you just see how amazing modern engines are in finding you know attack squares diagonals opening stuff you know they don't wait to get squashed they don't wait you know uh any moment at all they see an opportunity they go for it and uh, yeah very nice uh i always was a lovely concept from uh, from dragon um and um it's the sort of thing uh, to be honest it's the sort of thing that i was always looking to do uh, when i was uh, when i was uh, when I was playing well, you know, I was always looking to, um, uh, in the opening, to to make a conflict as soon as possible. Um, and uh, yeah, this is a lovely idea from uh, from Dragon here. So Bishop D7 was played by Deep Blue Castles, um, and now. Um, uh, oh yeah that's right uh, yeah I wanted to show you uh, a little bit of something here because uh, a3 was what the engines were was a uh, stockfish against dragon for example um, and um, uh, yeah you know what are the engines uh, doing here well for example queen b8 this was dragon castles rook d8 rook e1 and now a5 and again it's all about you know um, breaking open something again dragon's not going to wait you're going to see what happens to deep blue not going to wait for stuff to, to come at it it's just going to um, open up stuff already d takes c4 and b5 in we go yeah stockfish uh, sacrificing the exchange in order to uh, to open uh, diagonals against the king you know just just um you know incredible really yeah just uh, what the engines are making of this position and uh, well i wouldn't naturally say that this is uh, um you know i wouldn't naturally say that oh this is the way I, I'd, I'd play it as white but you just uh, you know feel all that they're doing in order to um uh, to create activity here and imbalance and um yeah you know really really impressive um and um but here you know here you see one of the limitations i suppose of you know deep blue in uh, in in 1996 and um um i think to be honest uh, it would have been interesting to to know what deep blue in 1997 made of this position i think it would have played it a lot better because uh, what was really noticeable about deep blue in 1997 was that it was very much able to play on the wings um loads of games where um uh, there's um um, obviously the, the game two as well but also game four with white um, it was getting into some sort of uh, you know position with a, a center where you're not really sure what to do and it was you know happily playing on the wings like that and uh, well this is exactly what the engines want um, I mean there's uh, this move d takes c4 and b5 is again um, played who was playing this was this dragon again yeah this was uh, dragon again uh, playing this and um, uh, stockfish um was very very keen on going a5 and a4 b4 d takes c4 knight a7 and uh your rookie one bishop b5 and you see straight away you know like the whole position has changed there's holes in white's position yeah sure you know black's uh making some uh some maybe some uh, concessions and all that but you know you're, you're fighting you're um you're, you're stopping the opponent from just building up beautifully um what uh you know what, what uh, d blue did um i don't know whether there was some programming that told it you know that, that was sort of uh, giving it um uh, negative scores for moving pawns for example or anything like that um um I, also i have to say that you know in the 1997 match deep blue was not at all averse to moving its rooks pawns forward there's loads of examples of that so yeah um yeah i guess that deep blue 1997 might have played a5 i mean if anyone yeah knows that or uh 
uh, you know, uh, ever saw anything about that. I'd be really, really interested to know. But um, but yeah, Deep Blue played Knight H5, which is just not really any sort of move, really. I mean, you're, the Knight's going to come into F4, but it's an unsupported Knight. You know, it's uh, it's just going to ch get chased away with uh, with G3 very easily. And uh, yeah, you know, it's not really easy to say what's happening now. It's not to say that you're totally lost after doing that, but just um, yeah, you know, sort of the seeds of. Um, uh, the seeds of uh, of disaster are starting to be sown, and I'm sure that Gary was unbelievably happy when he saw it. So we went rookie one. Um, yeah, a3 was also possible, but rookie one is fine. Knight f4 and bishop b1. Um, and the engine's already saying plus 1.0 here. And uh, yeah, what are you going to do here? Actually, you know, the engine's, uh, um, again willing to to take any sort of um uh, action here they wanted to play um f5 here this is what stockfish was doing and i mean it's 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 really risky right but um um at least pawn f5 you're getting some space you're blocking some diagonals you're, you're in there fighting uh, basically okay you're making some weaknesses but what the hell you know and stockfish was managing to draw some games against dragon uh, not exactly comfortable but was managing it um, but bishop d6 was played and Gary went g3 and the knight goes back to g6 um, again you know the engines looking to play a, a check here takes an f5 you know okay it's horrible we're giving up uh, squares and all that but at least we're, we're not giving white a, um, a free run at the king side but um, yeah knight g6 and of course you know this is this is just tempting an h pawn to uh, to move up and uh, and chase it away and um, yeah, ninety five, a little bit funny from Gary. A little, I was a little bit surprised about that one. I thought you know a move like a three would be uh, first of all would be uh, quite uh, quite normal. But uh, but um, yeah, after ninety five, again, what uh, what uh, the engines wanted was to take take and go bishop b four, and just use this opportunity. Okay, we're going to swap off a knight. We're going to swap off uh, a bishop for the other knight, and then we'll open up the center and we'll get our pieces active. And it's not so bad eh? after a3 takes takes d takes c4. The engines think that White's barely got an advantage there. So yeah, I mean this move knight e5 was just a little bit hasty. I think uh, as I said you know a3 is also a very natural move to play. If you do a5 knight e5, that's what the engines wanted. Then um, yeah, Black doesn't have this possibility. So yeah, nothing. Uh, n yeah. No, no real counterplay there, but okay. After knight e5, rook c8 was played by uh, d blue, and now knight takes d7 and knight f3. I mean, Gary's just playing it very calmly here. He's picked up um, the advantage of the two bishops, um, and um, now he's just protecting his stuff. Um, I think what Gary understood was that uh, deep blue was very loath to take on on c4. Um, which, to be honest, is really going to be the only counterplay that Black will have at some stage. Um, you know, you really need to do something like that at some stage. Otherwise, uh, you know, Gary's going to play c5 at some stage and move the queen side pawns and then the king side pawns forward, and Black will get completely squashed. Um, yeah, you know, that's just what happened in the game. Um, but Deep Blue was was just finding it, yeah, finding it very hard to uh, to make a plan. And uh, yeah, in this game, yeah, just looking like um, like an engine simply. You know, I mean, that's uh, the problem. I mean, if you go rookie two, that's another line. Then you know, D takes C four. That's what the engines were saying. And uh, yeah, it's it's horrible. It's not nice at all for Black. I mean, uh, you know, you've got uh, this extra possibility of D five, and the bishops are pointing towards here. But yeah, at least you've got a D pawn and a C pawn you can attack here. Um, after rook e3, uh, rook d8 from uh, deep blue, uh, h4, you could even have considered c5 already, just closing the centre and then coming with a3 and all of that. But Gary threw in uh, h4 and now knight e7. And this is an interesting, um, um, an interesting position. Actually, after uh, a3, uh, uh, Feng Chung Shu was, uh, was so shocked by what was happening to him. He fed the wrong information into Deep Blue uh, after A3, causing a crash and loss of several minutes. Um, yeah, I mean, Gary um, mentioned that um, at various stages he could have maybe played a sacrifice here. Um, but he was, um, you know, he was, yeah, he was simply thought, is this really, do I really need it? He was very, very tempted, of course, but do I really need it? But it was a win um, at any moment, really. Um, he could have gone Bishop H7 and Knight G5, typical Greek gift. Um, king g8 is the is the best um, obviously if king g6 we go queen g4 f5 
um, h5 check and queen h4 here um, and uh, well we're just going to line up on uh, on e6 here we'll go a3 b4 trace away the bishop and then rook e1 and uh, well Hans Berliner um, um, analyzed this in um, in the 1996 issue of the uh, correspondence chess journal or computer chess uh, journal and uh, yeah said that it was uh, um, yeah just winning as well um, if you go to um, after 95 you go to g8 we go queen h5 and then we go c takes d5 here and uh, knight e3 d6 and f e3 and uh, well you're just going to go rook f1 and queen h7 mate it's all winning of course but yeah you know why would you do it um after a3 bishop a5 we can go bishop h7 check again no problem at all um all winning um what did the uh what was an engine line here that i saw oh king h6 is one possibility uh, but we'll go knight f7 king g6 and knight g5 and come in here you know i mean uh it's just all all completely winning here um oh this was a nice line e5 c takes d5 knight d5 queen d3 queen f5 and you might want to give yourself a little uh, tactical test here um rook c6 rook c6 h5 check king g5 rook e5 takes takes and uh well black's actually got quite a bit of material but the, with the king being uh, so weak it's um it's a total disaster really um but again you know all these sort of lines very easy for um for an engine not so easy for uh, uh for a human player so you know i think that gary was completely right just to continue squashing d blue um b4 bishop c7 now actually the engines don't think that uh, bishop h7 is uh oh no it's still it's still a good move bishop h7 that's right it's a bit later check again h5 and queen h4 and again we're we're lining up on uh, on e6 here uh, e5 check d e h6 you're just blasting everything open you know it's uh but again you know it's it's all uh all these lines uh they require some calculation and uh you know all a little bit messy really so um uh simply um yeah after bishop c7 c5 here um yeah, I mean, this is just completely crushing. You could also just go uh, b5 in this position. And uh, if knight a5, then uh, bishop h7 check is uh, again winning. Loads of ways. But uh, Gary just played c5 here. And, uh, well, what can you say? Um, just an absolutely horrible position. So after rook e8, um, the moment for bishop h7 has passed. Gary just played queen d3 here. g6, rook e2 just uh, avoiding knight f5 it's just all about um uh, being absolutely safe bishop c3 um h5 b5 now um yeah i mean uh, knight a5 i think had to be played right but uh but then we go knight d2 for example just stopping the knight coming into c4 and uh well that knight's totally out of play but after knight c7 uh bishop d2 yeah again you're completely in control here um king g7 a4 um rook a8 yeah i mean the engines are doing anything right uh, a6 you know they're they're breaking up but you know deep blues just uh, ends up completely immolating its pieces a5 a6 b6 and then bishop b8 um uh and uh yeah and behind deep blue uh feng chung shu says again the chess chip was able to detect the bishop being trapped so in hardware unfortunately there was very little penalty levied by the evaluation software for getting the bishop trapped so uh um yeah that's why it didn't play the move bishop d8 um but in hardware it saw that the bishop was getting trapped bishop c2 it's just so easy for gary knight c6 bishop a4 here Rook e7, bishop c3. Here, deep blue decided to play uh, knight e5 and uh, yeah, try and break the um, uh, the uh, um, the bind a little bit. But just d takes c5 and knight d4 takes and queen takes. And of course, Gary only needed a draw anyway. So uh, you know, it, it's just uh, um, even if he messed this one, he's never going to lose this one. And even if he messed it up totally and only made a draw, he'd still win the match. So yeah, you know totally hopeless situation here queen d7 bishop d2 rook e8 bishop g5 just uh um just uh um you know uh 
putting the pieces in there. Actually, the engine's already saying that Gary's c6 that he played a little bit later could be played already, but bishop g5, rook c8 check, and now c6. B takes c6. Uh, if you go rook c6, we go rook c2. Um, it's what we often said about Alpha Zero's games, you know, uh, exchange the pieces that, uh, the opponent's pieces that are active, leave him with passive. Well, if that rook on uh, on c6 gets exchanged, there's only the queen that can do anything, and uh, the rook on the bishop are uh, completely paralysed. So b c6 from um, from d blue, queen c5 to stopping any counterplay, king h6, rook b2, and rook b4. And uh, yeah, here the... Um, uh, the deep blue operators uh, resigned for uh, for deep blue because uh, I mean well we're just doing anything but of course uh, opening up the king side soon and uh, well there's nothing that black can do against this so um, yeah I mean Gary said that uh, at the end of the match obviously very happy with uh, what had happened and uh, said that after the first game he learned not to play an open position where it has a chance to attack your king uh, the positions were still, uh, you know, open, but the possibilities for uh, Deep Blue to create something against Gary's king uh, was very limited. And that was really what Gary was looking for, a safe king. And um, and then just, um, yeah, just then just trying to play chess, basically. And, uh, well, yeah, you know, somehow, uh, um, in a way, it feels like, um, you know, like um, it was kind of a different Deep Blue that turned up for the last two games. Because, uh, frankly, the first four games... Uh, were fairly impressive you know obviously some weaknesses in the in the second game but um yeah, in general you know looked really pretty good whereas here you know looked really really horrible so um yeah clearly enough a lot a lot of uh, potential in uh, in deep blue but um obviously some things that uh, that needed fixing and uh, well we're going to see uh, how far the deep blue team got for to uh, to fixing all those problems in the next series of videos where we'll have a look at the rematch in 1997 which was uh, uh, even more dramatic than this one and uh, yeah very controversial but incredibly fascinating so there we are i hope you're enjoying this uh, this video series this look back and uh, you know from a bit of a modern perspective with modern engines on this uh, match um and uh, yeah you know if you like the series why not uh, give a like uh, subscribe to the channel take a look at all my books certainly including Game Changer, all about Alpha Zero, Silicon Road to Chess Improvement, about which I'm very proud. There's also yeah, a couple of excellent uh, uh, chessable courses on that. Uh, I've got very good comments for those, so do take a look at those. Um, and also a latest book, which is Reengineering the Chess Classics, which you know looks at, uh, at uh, old games, classic games, uh, by classical players, and um, yeah, just uh, finds amazing new stuff together with uh, modern engines. And uh, actually also take a look at, um, if we're looking at Christmas presents, Study Chess with Matthew Sadler, which um, uh, a slightly older book, um, just all about my own experiences uh, coming back to chess after a long absence and trying to get myself stronger again. And uh, I did a chessable course on that, and I thought that chessable course was really nice, actually. So uh, you know, do take a look at those things if you're stuck for a Christmas present for a, a chess mad friend. But otherwise, you know, hope you enjoyed these videos and, um, uh, well, you know, hope to see you for the next series, the 1997 match between Deep Blue and Gary Kasparov. Thanks for watching.